So in this video, we discuss a second example for the, the problem uh, that we discussed in the previous video in terms of conveyor loop with deterministic loading and unloading sequences with the goal of identifying or computing the, the capacity of the carriers for a conveyor. And in this example, which is very similar to the example that we presented in the previous video, with the only difference that in this example, we have a conveyor with 10 carriers instead of nine. So in this example, the conveyor has 10 carriers equally spaced. And our goal is to determine the required capacity per carrier. We are presented with the loading and unloading sequences. And these, uh, in this particular example, also the period equals seven. So, um, so I'm presenting here the, the answer. So we are gonna follow the same strategy that we follow uh, for the previous example. Um, we, we first want to uh, compute the, the values for um, the relation F1N. Um, and we also need to obtain the, the, the results for the ratio K over P. This cannot be an integer for steady state operations. And we need to make sure that uh, by letting R equals K mod P, that the division of R and by P must be a proper fraction. Um, and it's also desirable for P to be a prime number. So we have performed those uh, relations in terms of F1N. Um, so we, we got one, one, two, 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 minus four and minus four. So if you look at F, little f one of n, we have the values for that set and we have the values also for little f two of n. Uh, and if you look at the difference per position, like for example, a little f one of n is equal to, to one. Uh, so one minus zero, that is equal to, to one. Uh, one minus zero is also equal to one. Two minus zero is equal to two and so on until we get to one minus minus, um, I'm sorry, one plus minus five that is equal to minus four and one plus minus five is equal to minus four. We also check for the ratio K over P and that's equal to 10 over seven, which is not an integer. Uh, R over P is um, equal to three over seven, which is a proper fraction. And we have a period, which is a prime number. So we can proceed. Um, so the first step is in order for us to compute the, the required capacity per carrier is to uh, let, um, we, we have to use this equation and we have to find the H one star value for, for each one of the positions. Um, so we have seven periods um, and we need to find the H one star value for each uh, period. So, um, so we start with A uh, by letting H one, H uh, I start of one equal to zero. Right, we, we start with that uh, as our, our first step, and that is arbitrarily. And for us to be able to use that um, initial value, h i star of one equals zero, we want to use that as a coefficient of this equation. Actually, we want to substitute that value in here. So what we are saying um, for, for this to be true is that N minus R has to be equal to one, right? Which is the value that we have uh, chosen arbitrarily. 
So for H1, HI star one equals zero, and we want to substitute that in here. So for A minus R to be equal to one, we understand that R in this problem is equal to three. So N has to be equal to four for this to make, uh, for this difference being equal to one. Okay, so that's what we want to do for this first step. Since we want to substitute H, HR start of one in here to find the next value of H1 star, um, <clears throat> we are going to make sure that this difference equals one. So N minus R is equal to one. We know that R equals three. So that means that N equals four. So n equals four. So that means that the next value that we're gonna find is h1 star of four because n equals four. Same thing here, f of one of n should be n equals four. So that will help us to determine h1 star of four as follows. So we, we can substitute now that value here for h1 star of one, which is equal to zero. And we can obtain f of one of three uh, from this uh, computations that we did initially. So F1 of three is equal to two. So zero plus two equals two. And as you saw, then we can repeat the process now. So we know uh, this value now, and we want to compute the, the next one using uh, a period for R equals three. Uh, so we add three to four. Um, so the next one that we are gonna compute is H1 start of seven using H1 start of four uh, plus F1 of seven. So H1 start of four is equal to two plus F of one of seven is minus four. Uh, so looking at that difference, this H1 start of seven is equals to minus two. Uh, if we add seven, if we add three to seven, then the next one should be equal to 10. However, since the period is equal to seven, H1 start of 10 will be equal to H1 start of three, which is the three units after seven when you look at the period of seven. So the next one that we are going to compute is H1 start of three. Um, and we're gonna use H1 start of seven, uh, which we compute, which is minus two and F1 of three which is equal to two. So H1 start of three is equal to zero. Likewise, we can compute H1 start of six, which is gonna be equal to minus four, H1 start of two, uh, which is gonna be equal to minus three and H1 start of five, which is equal to minus one. And that will complete uh, the process. We have obtained the values from one to seven for each one of the periods in the, in the example. Uh, so hence, after we have obtained those, those values for each one of the periods, we can form this set, H1 start of N, uh, which have, we follow the positions, right? So this is H1 start of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So if you can see here for six, we have minus four. So in the sixth position, we have minus four. So we found that set. Uh, so the next step is to find the values of H2 start of N, and those are obtained using this relation. So we have this set, H1 start of N already, this is the set. And we have also this set, F1 of N. F1 of N is given here uh, at the beginning. So we are gonna look at the difference between those, set, uh, those sets by position. So in this case, H2, H2 start of N is gonna be equal to H1 start of N minus F1 of N. So this is our set H of H1 of start of N. And per position, so zero minus one is gonna be minus one, three minus one is minus four and so on. So after we find the set H2 start um, of N, then we have to choose the minimum of H uh, of this set H I start of N. Uh, so if you look at both sets, uh, H1, um, H1 start of N and H1 two of N, the minimum value 
between this set and this set is minus five. So Z is gonna be equal to minus five. And then using this value, we can compute H I of N for each one of the positions. Uh, so we are gonna subtract minus C to each one of the uh, members of each one of the sets. So we start with H1. H1 of one is gonna be equal to zero minus minus five. So this is positive five. H1 of two is gonna be equal to uh, minus three minus minus five. So that's two. So you see the process. So we do that for each one of the positions. Um, and we also do that for H2. So for H2, we have minus one minus minus five. That's gonna be plus four. Uh, one minus minus five is, I'm sorry, minus four minus minus five is gonna be equal to positive one. So once we find all the values for H1 of N and H2 of N, we can determine um, the, the capacity uh, for B. B is gonna be the, the capacity for, or the required capacity per carrier in this conveyor. And it's gonna be the maximum between uh, of these two sets. So if you, if you look at these numbers, the maximum is seven. So the required capacity per carrier is gonna be equal to seven. So hopefully this example um, helps you understand a little bit better uh, the concepts for conveyors loop with uh, deterministic loading and unloading sequences when determining the capacity of the carriers in the conveyor. I will post this uh, as part of the, the lecture material, um, the, the example with the computations and also the video.